this sermon on becoming a true man, I believe this is the third time that I'm giving this sermon. If you don't become a true man, you're living as, an, as a perishing animal, but you're not a, a true man. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Because of your ancestors' transgressions and your sins, you think that you're alive, but inside you is only demons that's alive. But you're not a true man. That is what God is telling us. So, when, how, it's so precious to become a true man. So if you become a true man, God will give you fulfillment. And before you become a true man, God will not give you fulfillment. So then what do you think fulfillment is? Do you think money? Household that has a lot of money has a lot of problems. Why? The more you have money, you have more calamities. Why? Because thousand blessings, you have thousand problems. And that is why you should have money, but without any worries, that blessing. That is the blessing that God gives you. That's part of the, con the fulfillment that God gives you. Why do you believe in Jesus Christ? 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. Because he will give you all the wealth. That's why you want you believe in Jesus. So then those with demons inside, they say, oh, we have to go to heaven. Why should we receive money? Hey, you fool. You don't want to live as a, as a beggar and go to heaven. What does it say then in the Bible? You want to go to heaven, but still be rich on earth. That's why that is why if you believe in Jesus Christ, God will make you rich. Second Corinthians 8 verse 9. That's recorded there by God. Just because you go to church, but you don't know that, you're those fools. If you take out one verse, you go to hell. So without becoming rich, how can you go to heaven? T by taking that verse out, you really don't know. They all have weird demons inside. They're being fooled by them. Which demon is really fooling you first? It's your ancestors' demons. Not, you're unable to realize because of your ancestors' transgressions. John chapter 8, verse 33 and 34. 43, 44, because if you answer demons, no matter how much you listen to sermons, you don't realize the mystery. You don't realize it's because you answer demons. And then second, why can't you realize it's because Daniel chapter 12, verse 10, that because you're wicked, it's recorded by God. I did not make this up. And yet you don't want to listen to this sermon or this verse. That's why Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, when you tell them the righteous word, they want to, they want to become your enemy. Instead, they want, to listen to de they want to listen to lies and they have demons inside. If you give service with demons inside, then the service, the demons will receive this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20, what, you give service or you, you praise? You think that God is going to accept that? No, demons will take that. That's why no matter what, what the notes say, the, the musical notes say, or, or how many beats there are, It could be one beat, could become five beats for somebody, especially those who are older, grandparents. I'm over seven years old, so I, I keep missing a beat when, I, when I'm giving a praise. Instead of going chansong, I, I drag it out. So you can still go to heaven, but if you have sins inside, you cannot go to heaven. If you have sins, because you're not a true man. So everybody want to change your hate fate. Everybody wants to do that. Everybody wants, everybody wants to do well, but there's no one that does well. Who, who do you know that has done well? God said, Whether, where, what attaches itself to sin? First John chapter 3, verse 8, demons attach yourself. That's why without you realizing sin's coming out of your heart, sin's pushing God away, you have demons that attach yourself to sins and you keep doing the wrong thing. So God is saying, let's change our fate. Let's change our fate. That means let's receive fulfillment. So all of you, God is so almighty that God will send you to heaven and you say, oh, but I thought that going to heaven is the greatest. And yet you're doing, you don't want to listen to that. So go to heaven, even though God doesn't give you anything. But you don't say amen to that. Because you can't just not have anything and go to heaven. While you're alive on earth, you have to receive everything. Everybody wants that. But instead, if someone says, just go to, hell, go to heaven, you don't say amen. That's why your spirit has to dwell. First, third John, verse 2, everybody memorizes that verse. Your spirit has to dwell, but everything on earth, while you're, you, you have to dwell. Oh, that pastor. Palm, palm is a leopard, and Sa is first word, letter of lions, Haja. So, Pomsa is but 
in all things in Korean. If you're laughing, then you're going to have blessings. Everybody wants, everybody wants to do well, but who, who wants themselves to do well? You think that you, want your, you can make yourself to do well? No. Then everybody should do well, especially the professors. Why? Because they're so high up in education. Who can steal the best? They're the professor of, of, of thieves. That's why those who are number one is, are, are the professors. They all want to do well, probably more than anybody else. Why? Because they know a lot. So then they, the more they know, they, they want to receive more. So then the more, no, the more they know, they want to do well. They try to do well, but it doesn't work out. And that's why you and me, let's all do well this hour. So what is doing well? That is receiving all the fulfillment. So who gives you fulfillment? You have to become a true man. Let's look up Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5. God gives you fulfillment. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to account anything as from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Amen. So when you read the Bible, it says God or Jehovah. So then some people say, I don't know how much butter they've eaten, but their tongue is all twisted. So if you do a little bit more than that, then you become a fool. No matter what, you can still do well. When you say God, so even the shamans, anybody, everybody says, when everybody refers to God, they say God. But when you say Jehovah, only you and me, those who have done thorough force of repentance, we can call God Jehovah. Why do we call Jehovah? Because only Jehovah is true God. And only Jehovah will help and only make you into his child and send you to heaven. That's what Jehovah. So listen carefully. So you can be a citizen of South Korea, but just because you're a citizen, you don't say, oh, you're CEO or you're a manager. No, when you are an employee of that business, then you can say, oh, CEO or manager. That's our relationship with God. That's why when God gives you something, that any religion, all the, the demonic religions too, they can all can come back to God. So that is very, very wide, then you say God. But in that, when you're in there, and those who are especially chosen, then you have to call Jehovah. So you don't know the difference. So you are somebody's son or somebody's daughter when you say that. So only that person, only that person can call say father or mother to their parents, but anybody can, not anybody can call you father or mother, otherwise you're crazy. That's so only those who are chosen can say Jehovah. So when you do forced repentance, when you have the relationship with Jehovah, then when you say Jehovah, you can't help yourself, no one can help you on earth, only when you meet Lord, then he becomes Jehovah. And that's what Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 1 and 5, when you do force your repentance in verse 6, God, what kind of God? He's my helper, Lord, Lord God. Jehovah is Lord Jehovah. Lord Jehovah God. He becomes that. That is what is re recorded there. And that's why without doing force your repentance, my God does not help me. So, so then here today, sufficiency, who gives you this sufficiency? Isn't that incredible? It doesn't say Jehovah. It says God will give you. And that means anybody, as long as you meet God, then you can receive this. That is the promise. Then it says God will give you. So then who gives you faith as a gift? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. When you go to church and you're a pastor or elder or demons and you, you believe for thousands of years, that doesn't mean that you're going to receive faith. But even if you're here for the first time, if you do mystery of Christ, if you go inside Christ, then you can receive faith as a gift. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. And because I don't have time, so I, I can't go over every single one of these. So even this one verse, when I have to give a sermon on one verse, at least minimum of 10 hours. So I don't have 10 hours to be giving this sermon, talking with you. But today, you have to become a true man so that you can receive the sufficiency that God gives you. So Almighty God, He says, he says sufficiency. What does that mean? Or... 
What is the sufficiency that you think that that is for yourself? What is the difference between worldly and God? The sufficiency that God gives, that is, with faith, going to heaven is number one. Going to heaven is number one. So sufficiency, the first step is going to heaven. So then just because you go to heaven, does that mean that you're going to live as a beggar on earth and, and that you're going to suffer and you're going to be sick and because of your ancestors' transgressions, you have your suffering? As long as you live like that, you can go to heaven? Then you shouldn't even listen to that sermon. Why? Because you can't even resolve one problem and then you're going, you're going to go to heaven? So if you're suffering now, how can you go to heaven? If you're suffering now, you can't go to heaven. If there is sin, you can't go to heaven. Why? Because where there is sin, the demons will attach itself. Psalms 103, verse 3. When you have sins, that means that you're also going to have sickness. So in those, if you're sick and you're about to die, how can you go to heaven? So then, according to the Bible, if you're sick, what does that mean? That means there is sin. So you just have to repent thoroughly then all the sickness will be healed. All the calamity will be chased away. This is Psalms 103, verse 3. God recorded there. So I'm just sharing this so that I can be a witness to that. So then are you going to live a thousand years like this? When you buy an expensive house, Oh, sure, I want to live in a really bad house for 10,000 years. No, if you bought a really nice house, then everybody wants to move into that house right away. Oh, you say, I'm into that. That's why on earth, no matter how healthy you are, if heaven is all record, is, is ready for you, then you want to go there quickly. So you, sure, you can say, amen loudly. So if your amen is loud, You're, you're all going to do well. You and me, we all want to do well. It's fulfillment is what God wants to give us. So that, that sufficiency, that fulfillment, and you're going to record this on, on the notes. Even if you record it until you die, you're not going to record all of it. That's why God said in one word, you're going to heaven. When you live on earth, sure, you can, you're going to face all kinds of calamity, but God's going to block all the calamity. God said this is fulfillment, sufficiency. So God's going to block all the calamity and you're going to have fulfillment because you're going to go to heaven? No, you want tomorrow to be better than today, today better than yesterday. Everybody tries so hard to, to, to do well. So then, because God knows that, He said, if you just eat three meals a day, then you're going to go to heaven. He will block all the calamity and you're going to do better and better. This is three things God gave us, and He gave you fulfillment. That's in One Heart, One Way, Proverbs 19, verse 23. So this sufficiency, who's going to give you this? We're here to meet that God. If you meet Him, you're going to receive this sufficiency. You go to heaven, but why do you take anything out? Sure, if you take out going to heaven or your salvation, then everybody's going to really not going to be so upset. Even though if you have poor, you have to go to heaven, so why do you take that out? But if you ask them, how do you go to heaven? They don't know. They don't have the answer. Why is that? Because it was in a pocket, but because they were fooling around, it fell out. But everybody's trying so hard. God, if He said He's going to give you sufficiency, so if we meet God, we're here to meet God so we can receive this sufficiency. What? We don't, want to, we don't want to receive any of the leftovers. That's not why we're here. This fulfillment, me and my children, thousand generations will do well. Exodus 20, verse 5 and 6. And that is why me and my children, right away doing well and to 10,000 generations doing well. Who's, who doesn't want this blessing? Everybody likes it. So then this church, there are no churches that are actually sharing this properly. And there's nobody that does well. There are no witnesses to give testimonies at church. Let's all, let all, let us all receive this sufficiency from God. God said He's going to give us. We have to first become a true man. So then, how do you become a true man? Let's look up Psalms 19, verse 7. With the law. So how do you become a true man? So inside you, this spirit, you have to revive your spirit because your spirit was dead. That's why you weren't a true man. You have to revive your spirit and your, your mind was dead, so you have to 
you have to revive your spirit and your and your soul and when you rule over your your flesh then that is that is a true man and that is why reviving your spirit and your soul how do you revive and how do you revive that psalms 19 verse 7 ready go the law of jehovah is perfect restoring the soul the testimony of jehovah is sure making wise the simple amen here did god somewhere go somewhere who came out in this verse that means that you and me let's have the right relationship that's what's here when you do force your repentance you and me when you have the right relationship when you have the relationship with jehovah let's so if you're outside of the the building outside of the, of the business even if you're cleaning up and all that you still don't belong to that business but now that you become an employee that's what god is telling us here so when you become an employee from there on the company will take care of you will give you will give you your wages and and they will take care of you that's why the relationship with jehovah that means that you have the deep relationship with god that jehovah is true god that's what's recorded in the bible so then to all of you here the sufficiency god will give you so anybody can receive it from god but here this true god what he gives you have to have that right relationship only that person can receive this so then here your spirit and soul is going to be revived with what how do you revive your spirit and soul it says the law so then your spirit and soul inside you you can't see it but genesis chapter 2 verse 7 what does it say god created you out of dirt god created you and me out of dirt but he didn't just leave you like a perishing animal to you and me after he created us out of out of dirt the animals they have only soul that's why they only have IQ. That's the difference between man and a, man and animal. We all we both have IQ. That's why Ecclesiastes chapter three verse twenty and before that it says the the animals that you're raising at home, dog and cat and cow. What is the difference between them and you? And then God said, the animals that you're you're raising at home, they go back to dirt. They're the, they're their soul, but the human, the human that you have revived your spirit. You've revived your spirit so that that spirit will go to heaven. That's what God has recorded. That that means that you'll be you'll be you'll be saved. So even though you and I were same as the animal, but we're going to revive our spirit and our soul, then we become a true man. That's Psalms 19 verse 7. So then, how do you do it? You do it with the law. So then a true man, even the outside, you've been created with dirt, out of dirt. But if you leave that alone, then you become a perishing animal. Just like that, the IQ, you end with just the IQ and your soul. You end with just being a demon and, and wickedness. Where is that written? The wisdom and knowledge that you, you, you got with your head, that's all wickedness. So you have all the wickedness, then, you're all, then that person is really bad. James chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. But, but the spirit that God gives you, if you revive that with the law, if you revive your, the spirit with your law, then your inside yourself, your in, inner self will become a true man. So when you become a true man, that then God will give you, when you, and you'll receive wisdom and knowledge when you listen to sermons from a, a wise pastor. So this wisdom will go inside your heart. Proverbs 2, verse 10. The, the wisdom and knowledge that goes inside your head is different from wisdom and knowledge that goes inside your heart. So only what goes into your heart, that is good. So then if you don't know the difference between the two, then you're not a true man. So today to you and me, this, this law with the law, that you're going to revive your spirit and your soul. So you think, oh, soul, isn't that alive? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Because of your ancestors' transgressions and, transgressions and your sins, your soul is dead. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And that is why people who want to worship their ancestors, they're not alive. They're all dead. But if you want to revive your spirit, and with your spirit, even to your soul, chase the demons from your soul, and then your spirit, Matthew 12, verse 28, chasing all the, casting all the demons away. 
So when you have this soul in your heart, and you have you have revived your soul, and the demons inside your head, you're going to chase all that away, and then be forgiven of the sins. Then the wickedness and the sins, and the demons inside your head, when you have been forgiven of your sins and cha- and cast away all the sin, all the demons away, then your spirit and your soul will become alive. That's a true man. Only that person can actually rule over their flesh, and we're here to receive this blessing. We're here to receive this blessing. How precious is this is this promise from God? So then you saying it doesn't work. That it, that means that your spirit and your soul is blocking you. And that's why in our country everybody tries so hard, and everybody is building all this construction. So and. On the road, I look out the window. I look at outside the window. Some people say, "Oh, it's snowing," but no, I I see plant cards that say we had it's being constructed with their soul. What are they saying? They're saying that they're full of demons. That they're going to con you. So now, those kind of plant cards you can't see that anymore. That's really thank God. If they say they've done something with their soul, then they're all full of demons. They're going to con you. If they say they did it with the spirit, then that person is a true man. So you have to revive your spirit so you can revive your soul. So how do you revive your spirit? With the law. So when you revive your spirit, then you can revive your 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 soul and you can rule over your your flesh, and with the with the law only. So if you don't know the law. Why on TV some people come out and say, "Oh, the law is this and the law is that." Oh, that person is saying the wrong thing. Romans chapter three, verse twenty. Let's look that up. With the law, what do we do with that? With the law, this or that, you can't just make anything up. God said, "With the law, you should only do this." God has re- recorded. That's why Genesis chapter one, verse one, is a law starting with a with that. And Ma- Matthew chapter five, verse seventeen, Jesus said. The, the the recordings of our forefathers. He did not come. He did not come to to demolish demolish all that. He came to fulfill it. He did not come to destroy the law of the prophets. He came to fulfill it. That's why Genesis chapter one verse one, from that of Moses, all the way to all the law that prophets wrote. And then Luke chapter twenty four verse forty four it says, even the even the writings of the prophets and Psalms and Proverbs and everything in between, all the Old Testament, God said, Jesus said that He's going, He came to fulfill it. That's why Jesus Christ He fulfills it all. So then Jesus Christ for us, for you and me, He came for you and me to fulfill all of it. So then we have to eat all that as our spiritual food. That's why the word of God. The more you eat, Luke chapter one verse thirty-seven, that word is all the spiritual power. The more you eat, the more spiritual power is going to come out of you. And that is why when you come to revival for about two to three days, if you continue to listen to the word, then while you're listening to the word, you're going to be healed, and all the problems will get resolved. Why? Because it is the spiritual power. That's why miracles happen. So then today. The law. What are you supposed to do with the law? If you don't, the religions that don't know this, they have nothing to do with God. So with the law, only your spirit can be revived. So then, with God, you can receive all the sufficiency and all the help from God. That is why, no matter what religion, not religion, everybody talks about gods. People talk about Jehovah also. But today, you have to have a right relationship. If you don't do that correctly today, that this law, what are you supposed to do? If you don't know that, so even though with rice you don't know what you're supposed to do, so smart people they actually make wine with that, or they can make cooked rice with that, or they don't even know what. To, some people don't even know what to do, but rice for Koreans that is a basis of a meal. You have to make fe- meals with that. Let's read Romans three verse twenty. Ready, go. Because by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for though the law comes the knowledge of sin. Amen. So with the law, what are you supposed to do? And that is why the law, my spirit and my my soul has to be revived. 
So what do you do with the law? You have to realize your sins. You have to know your sins. But the religions of the demons, they say they sing dog, wor dog words. They sing the wrong things. So then people who don't know, they listen and they think, oh, maybe I'm supposed to do that with the law. That's how they... But you and me, what is the most important is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Starting from that, what does it say? Let's go to Matthew 5, verse 17. Jesus said he fulfilled all of the law. That's why he came. That's why John 19, verse 30, he said he fulfilled it all. He fulfilled it all. You don't know that. And then you go to church, you're all going to go to hell. You have to receive everything that he has, he has fulfilled so you can go to heaven. That's why those four things. I believe I have given a sermon in the past from starting with the law. I have given from, from the Lord. I have given all the way to wisdom and knowledge and deep understanding. Lord, one heart, one way, and wisdom and deep understanding has been fulfilled, has nothing to do with you. So then if you don't know what fulfillment means, and if you're sitting here, then I feel sorry for that person. So you don't know what has been fulfilled, but you, you want to receive sufficiency. And that is why you keep saying it doesn't work. And that means that you've done something wrong that it's, it's not working for you. So then if you look at this material, if it's been finished, then at the end it has to be. You have to, you have to look it over to make sure that it's, you have to make sure that it's, it is, um, it passes. But if there's something that's missing, then that is a defect that cannot be sold. So even though same company, same factory, same production line, but sometimes defects come out and you can't use that. With the law, what do you realize? You realize your sins. We didn't make this up. God recorded it. So then, to become a true man, what is the first prerequisite? You have to have the law. And that is why Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, starting with that, the law of the prophets and Psalms and prophets, Jesus fulfilled it all. Because that is all the law. You have to realize your sins. And that is why Jesus said he has car he carried all of the sins of the of of the world. That's why he died on the cross. So Jesus Christ fulfilled, he resolved all the sins. So then no matter what religion, are they all, do they all have the law? There are many, many religions that don't have the law. They're all fake. So then people say, oh, every religion is the same. Are they crazy? How can they, how can they be the same? They don't, have the, they don't have the law. You have to have the law so you can realize your sins. So with your realization, and when you repent, then you become a true man. Only that person can go to heaven. Matthew 5, verse 17. Ready? Go. Think not that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. So whether the law or the prophets, the laws of the prophets, he didn't come to destroy, but he came to fulfill. Who did that? Jesus Christ did that. Because he fulfilled it all. And that is why realizing sins, only Jesus Christ can resolve your, pro your sins. And yet, how can you say all the religions are the same? How can, is there two Jesus Christ or one? Everybody, Ephesians chapter 4, everybody knows there's only one. How can you say religions are the same? If there's no law, you can't realize your sins. If you don't realize your sins, that's the first prerequisite requisite of becoming a true man that you don't become. If you don't realize your sins from the very beginning, but with number one, you fail. And that is why with, with the law, what do you realize? You realize your sins. And that's why any religion, do they have the law? No. And that's why they're fake religions that got made by, made by man, made, made by demons, Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Why? Because all, all, all humans are full of demons. There is no law. And so then, what does Jehovah God, what does he do? The religions that is made, made by man, by those demonic gods, Jehovah God will test them. Exodus chapter 
12, verse 12. How can you say all the religions are the same? Why are you saying all those? With the law, you realize your sins. So when you realize your sins, aha, the Old Testament is written for who? Right now, today, it's for me. Today, morning service, dawn service, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 3, it's for me. It's a promise for me. It's my spiritual food now, right now. And that is why 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, it was written. That's why it's all, it's all gone bad. That's only a promise with my ancestors. No, it's, it's right now. It's a, it's a promise with you. That's why right now, according to word, it can happen right now. That's why we're here to receive this blessing. Right now, it still can be done. Amen. Because of this promise, we're here. And that is why God said to us, what? Romans, Isaiah 58, verse 1. Your ancestors' transgressions and your sins cry out loudly. Isaiah 58, verse 1. With a loud voice, your ancestors' transgressions and your sins. And you think that you're, you're alive, but you're actually a spiritual dead. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Let's cry out loud. Let them know that they're not true you, true men. So crying out, and that is what we're supposed to do, spreading the gospel. But on the internet, people are uploading it on the internet. So you're, you're uploading it all, all? So then that's what people are doing. So after that, Isaiah 59 verse 1, what does it say? God wants to help you, but, but your sins is blocking. Your ancestors' transgressions are blocking between you and God. That's why He can't help you. That's why your ancestors' transgressions and your sins, you have to cry out. That's why chapter 8, verse 58, verse 1. And that's why Isaiah chapter 59, verse 1, 2, 3. Without your sin, God can help you. And we're here to receive this blessing today. He can help you with everything to, to receive this sufficiency. God will give you this fulfillment, contentment. God has said, if God told you that He will give you sufficiency, what is, is that money is not included? Or your sickness is not, or your health is not included? Everything. You have to receive everything so you can be sufficient. So God will be respond, responsible to 10,000 generations. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 and 6. Oh, if it was for me, I would just say only to third generation. Oh, but because of this, I'm going to... But Almighty God, He's Almighty God. Your 10,000 generations, he will, he will be in control. He will protect you. That's why we're here to it today to receive this blessing. God said He will give it to us. So then because of your sin, you cannot receive. So then with the law, you realize your sins. What are you supposed to do after that? So with, your, with the law, you realize your sins. So you have to be forgiven of your sins. Where do you have to go? You're not going to stir fry the sins. You have to go where you can be forgiven. That is why Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. Let's look that up. So please, with, your law, with the law, you realize your sins. Please, if you, don't, if you don't know this, just call the church and ask. So don't try to re understand it on your own. So with the law, you realize your sins. So when you realize your sins, you have to go where, you can, where, the, where the sin can be, can be forgiven, only through the mystery of God. Only through the Mr. Christ. So if you don't know, you realize you don't. If you don't know to realize your sin, so so what? If, after that, with the with the law, you realize your sins, and you have to go to mystery of God, mystery of Christ, where you can be, where the sin can be forgiven. So without the law, you don't become a true man. Without mystery of God, mystery of Christ, without force of repentance, you cannot become a true man. And yet, if you don't do any of this, and you think that you become a man, you can go to heaven. You're all full of lies. And that's why you've never received fulfillment. So you have never received sufficiency. So wherever you go, you're full of wasting time. That's why we don't need, we don't have time to, let's not sin by, by talking, about, talking about bad things, but let's just realize our sins. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24, we have to go before Christ. If you, that's all you need to know. So when you realize your sins, and with the sin, where do you need to go? You, you know that, and you go there. As long as your sins get forgiven, so anybody can become a true man. And that you can have fulfillment, because God will give you this sufficiency. That's it, that's it, that's it. And that is why life of faith, the most important, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, from there, 
is a law of the prophets, realizing your sins, and after that is a law of the law of because Je all Jesus Christ came to fulfill. If you realize your sins, then with the sin, where do you go? To you have to go before Mr. God, Mr. Christ. Because if you don't have both of these, then you don't become a true man. So me and my children, you have problems, you have sickness, and nothing's working out. You are suffering. As long as you have these two, then you can live. And that's why God has, God has made it so you can have true sufficiency. And God has promised that He will give it to you. So He will give you sufficiency. But going to heaven, blocking all the calamity, if you want to talk about that, and everything else is included. Everything, God will resolve everything. We're here to receive this blessing. We're here to believe Jesus. Amen. And believe in God. Amen. And that is why when you realize the sins, you have to realize Pro Proverbs 28, verse 24. Oh, you stole your mom's money. Oh, but my parents said it's okay. Oh, I know the law, but I... It's okay. But God said that is still stealing. That is why the Word of God, we just have to repent according to the Word of God. So where do you have to go to go to repent? Before Christ. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. So that the law is become our tutor to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Amen. So with the law, you realize your sins. Romans 3, verse 20. With the law, you realize your sins. So then the five, five books written, written by Moses, it's all the law. And the laws that the prophets have written and Proverbs and, and, and Psalms, we have to, it's all been fulfilled by Jesus Christ. So you go before Jesus Christ. It's all the law. You realize your sins. So that when you realize your sins, your sins from before or new sins, it doesn't matter. That's why Old Testament, New Testament, it's all Holy Trinity. It's all the same. So then you and me, God is telling us to realize, realize our sins with the law. Then where do you have to go after that? Before Christ. And what does Christ do? Let's look up Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Mystery of Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Let's end with that verse. We wanted to read more verses, but, but the demons inside me, oh, it's making me sick. Oh, my, my head is hurting. So I only have to say with one verse, then your head doesn't hurt. And you're all going to be, the sins can be, hey, you Satan, demon, be chased away. I just have to say it. And that's why we're here to receive this blessing. Amen. Oh, but Pastor Park, oh, but my children are worse than me. That is a love of their parents. The Korean mothers, even though they're going to hell, but oh, as long as my children go to heaven, they're fools. If you go to heaven, then your children, 10,000 generations will go to heaven. They're all going to follow you. But as long as I don't go, it's okay if I don't go, as long as my children go. If you don't go, your children are also going to follow you. Starting with me, say after me. Starting with me, let, let's, let's have full familiar. Starting with me, let's go to heaven. Starting with me, let's block the calamity. Then your 10,000 generations, God will bless them. That's a promise from God. You're Otherwise, you're full of demons and you think, as long as it, even if it doesn't work for me, as long as my children do well. Use your last name, ne, my, me, me, me. Sure. You're right. They came from within you. So they are your children. But our, our mothers, they're really fooling themselves. If you do well, your thousand generations will do well. That's a promise from our father, Exodus 20, verse 5 and 6. And that is why today we're here to do better. As long as we re resolve our problems, then our children to a thousand generations will also be fulfilled. We're here to receive this blessing. Let's all do well. Amen. And that is why one heart, one way, God is saying, you do well and your children do well. That is one heart, one way of Jeremiah 32, verse 39 and, 30, 39 and 40. And that is why as long as I do well, my children, 10,000 generations will do well. That's why when you are looking for your in-laws, don't look for anything else. Just look at 
look to see that mother actually prays a lot. If they come to dawn service and, and, and watch them pray at Sunday service, that's all you need to look. Or, or that mother. So don't worry about the children as long as the parents are praying. So if you look at the sesame seed, if it's black, there's some that it's stuck to, to the pumpkin. But just because it's stuck to the pumpkin doesn't mean that it belongs to the pumpkin. That's still a sesame seed. No matter where you are, you're still a, you're still a sesame seed. You're going to do well. You'll do well. You'll do better and better. Block all the calamity. You're going to go to heaven. I'm lacking repentance, so then I'm, I'm saying from, from what I, when I used to drink, I need to repent this. But if I pretend like I didn't say that, then that's a problem. Uh, I'm, Pastor Noah is going to be upset with me. So she's going to say, hey, you, why are you saying the things you used to say when you got drunk before? And that's why every time we have communion, I, I repent a lot. I always say, Father, please don't let the old, old habits come out. So when I see some of you drink, I see how you, you drink like that. That's how I used to drink before when you're taking communion. Why are there so many people like that here? It's so much fun. But we can still be forgiven. Whether this or whether that, whether you're a thief or whether you're Rahab, you can all be blessed. You just have to go before Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Let's read it. To whom God was pleased to make known what is the riches of the glory of, the, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. All of you giving glory to God, whether you drink or whether you eat, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31, whatever you do, you have to give glory to God. So what is giving glory? Oh, well, should I name my child glory no that is when miracles happen that's doing well that's when you give glory to god that's what god is saying whether you drink or whether you, whether you eat give glory to god so in one word receive miraculous answers so receiving miraculous answers that is when christ comes inside your heart that's the mystery of christ how precious is this promise and that is why Christ coming inside your heart without doing force of repentance, He will not come inside your heart. And that is why if you want to become a true man, first, what do you need to have? The law. You have to have the law. You have to realize, you have, so that you can realize your sins. So when you realize a lot of sins, that's why it puts on first church, sins coming out of your heart, sins that you don't want to keep God inside your heart, some demons inside you, your ancestors' demons and your grandfather, grandmother's demons, oh, hey, they, they even will come, they will show themselves even in your dream and they say, oh, worship me, worship me. But those demons are leaving you. They're saying all the excuses. Yeah, in your dream, they're going to say all this, but don't listen to them. Don't listen to the demons. And then when you repent, when you get rid of the sins, the sickness that was attached to the sin, Psalms 103, verse 3, the sin and the, and the sickness, they were together, and the demons will take all of that as they leave. Today, to your children, let us all resolve all the problems today. We're here to receive this blessing. We're here to receive sufficiency today. That's, are you all sufficient? Are you all sufficient? So you have to have both. You have to have the law, and you have to have the mystery of Christ. And that is the mystery of God. So if you don't have mystery of God and you don't have the law and realize your sins, if you don't have that, so if you don't erase the sins, no matter how clean this cup is, if you, if you, if you look closely, there's, all goes, there's going to be dirty parts and that's where this, the viruses are going to be, bacteria. But if it's clean, they cannot attach itself. When you're clean, then God will fill you with all your wishes to your 10,000 generations will be, will be blessed. Let's all receive this sufficiency. Let's all receive this contentment. Amen. No matter what, let's all receive this blessing. Amen.
And that is why God is telling you, let's become a true man. So sure, everybody wants to go to college, universities, but how come it doesn't teach you how to become a true man? Because they don't know. Americans, they show this, they say, so when I went to the States for the first time, when I asked them something, they, they would do that. That's what I learned. So then the deacons who are with me, they also do that. When I ask them, this is what they answer. I'm afraid they may fly away. If you do that really hard, you're going to fly away. Let's all do well. God is almighty. He will give you sufficiency. He will, what is, what is sufficient? Going to heaven and blocking all the calamity. And on top of that, doing better and better. And healing all your sickness. That's so easy. He doesn't just give it to you, but to 10,000 generations. That is fulfillment. Let's all receive this blessing and live well. Let's all do well. Let's do better. Going to heaven. Block all the calamity. Let's give blessings to our children. Let us all receive this blessing. This is how you become a true man. Amen. That's starting with the law. Those that's not working for you. Detail, if we have more time later, but today, let's realize our sins. And quickly, if you go before Christ, if you do force your repentance, then God, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, will erase all, those, all of them. And 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, will make you into a new creation. And when you become a new creation, He will pour the blessings onto you. Surely today, let's receive this fulfillment today. That's why before you, why do I boast that I don't have any sickness? This is because grace of God. I'm over 70 years. Of course, I'm going to be sick somewhere. But I don't have any of that. So I'm so thankful for this promise. I, re I hope that you'll receive even more blessings, even be more healthy to 10,000 generations. Let's all receive this. Let's all do well. Let's do better and better. Amen. Let us all pray. God, with the law of Moses, oh, it gives me a headache. It talks about this sin and that sin. It's all recorded. It gave me a lot of headache. And the demons are attached to it and they don't want to leave. But Father God, before Christ, before the mystery of Christ, before the blood of Christ, please cleanse all the sickness so that the demons can be cast away with all the sickness. So me and my children can only receive blessings. This incredible promise. Help us to receive to 10,000 generations starting today. Help us to receive the blessings. Help us not to listen to anybody else. Only help us to be obedient to your word so we, we can receive all the fulfillment, giving praise to you. To 10,000 generations, help all of them to live within this fulfillment and that our, our household can be well known for all the blessings that we receive. Help us to all become witnesses to all, all of every, everybody. All this we pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving and blessings. Amen.